Space Planet Optical Illusions. Welcome to this special upload in celebration of NASA's 50th anniversary. I'm Nibi, hoping you're doing very well and ready to test your brain and your eyes. We're not going to go into the moon landing per se, that deserves a, an upload entirely on its own. But we are going to go into the CGI of space and planets. So what do these look like to you? Upon first glance, these utterly fascinating photographs in Christopher Johansson's Devour, or Devour project that was created back in 2008 that look like real pictures of other worldly planets, don't they? But what they actually show, the truth in all of this, my friends, is always so very simple. Oakham's razor, as they say. They're simply the result of effective camera photography with the right backdrop. These images are very common household bottom of frying pans shot against a black backdrop. That's all. So what began in 2003 as an exploration of the mundane world of kitchenware has morphed over the past decade or so into something much more profound for the Norwegian photographer Christopher Johansson. He shot hundreds of pans over the course of several years and says, I found that each pan more or less had a planet hidden inside of it and it was up to me to discover it. Well, Christopher, it's up to Nibi to show people about this. But a few years later, NASA actually had to respond. The image was tweeted by NASA's California-based Europa mission, telling you the truth. In fact, showing you the truth and blatantly saying, how stupid are we really? And how gullible are we? So at 11.43 p.m., on August the 21st, back in 2015, the tweet, a so-called single image of Jupiter's moon Europa, is positioned amongst eight shots of frying pans. The organization had revealed how many of these neighboring planets and moons resemble objects found much closer to home. <laughs> frying pans, my friends. But the resemblance is so uncanny and literally impossible to tell which is which. And that is the whole point, my friends. It's all to confuse and to put a doubt in your own self-observations. How could one possibly differentiate between the two? And what's more hilarious to them, the space agency had even challenged the Twitter users to find the shot of Jupiter's Europa moon that was hidden in the grid of exactly the same images of nine frying pans and certainly not eight. You can hear them behind the scenes laughing. Johansson's pics have been in the public eye since 2011 and part two of his project is also out for you to, to peruse. I've included some of them in the upload as well. But this is not the only example that we have. There is so much more. Vince Blake is an Italian photographer and film director with a rather an unconventional background. A scientist by training, he holds an MSc in biotechnology. Vince felt early on in his career a strong fascination with art which eventually led him to develop a vision of the world filtered through the prism of his scientific studies. While art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life, as Pablo Picasso once said, through the masterful application of chemistry and electronic engineering, Vince Blake challenges our perception of reality by subtly playing with everyday objects. The Planets series was precisely born from this process. So in 2016, upon first glance, these images all look like celestial bodies viewed and captured from a so-called distant light year away satellite. 
the similarities are incomprehensible to tell which is which to the human eye. But subsequently, they are all, in fact, my friends, nothing more than a common household egg, chemically manipulated and shot in the comfort of the artist's studio. An egg. <laughs> now there are also fire hydrants transformed into so-called planets entitled Planet Universe. In 2013, this is a series of imaginary planet illustrations that are based on photographs of rusty fire hydrants. San Francisco film student Adam Kennedy noticed that the rust patterns on the globe-like knobs atop city fire hydrants look remarkably like landforms on a planet. So he photographs the fire hydrants and digitally manipulates them into remarkably convincing planets. So after gaining notoriety for the project on Reddit, Kennedy now plans to make a calendar and posters of his planets. And I encourage you to, you know, check them out. They're absolutely fascinating. So who could possibly tell the difference between a so-called celestial planet, a frying pan, an egg, or something else entirely? As you might have these things in your kitchen cupboards right now as this doesn't stop here either have you ever left the lid of a scanner open to find that the backdrop of your image was rendered black instead of white now this essentially was the impetus behind photographer Navid Barity's project back in 2015, funny enough called Wonder Space Probe. There is also part two out now. Please, please check these out. They are truly amazing. So by simply using an Epson photo scanner, Barity carefully positions various household, household items, many of which are edible, on the document table. Cooking ingredients like baking soda, sugar and cinnamon act as distant stars and nebulas, whilst glasses containing milk and water and food colouring create the planets. Once everything is aligned, and correctly positioned, Barity hits the scan button. He describes his project as cosmic explorations of an imaginary space probe. And you can follow him on Facebook and Instagram and see some of the brand new ones that are out now. There's even one of an eclipse, my friends, and these are truly, truly uncanny. So what does one really need to see? How much more does one really need to see? The question will retain with that beholder, yourself, you. You will decide what you will have for breakfast tomorrow. A diet CGI or a full fat CGI? If these people, you, ourselves, we have the capabilities to do this with the right backdrops and store-bought technology, we can make these images so photorealistic and literally impossible to tell the difference between a so-called light year away planet or space nebula to a very earthly homemade fake one. Please try and imagine what the DOD or NASA and all of the other filter space agencies could do with their Black Ops unlimited budget digital capabilities. 
think about that for a moment seriously. Is it possible, my friends? Why not go back and look at them again? Of course it is. And honestly, that should really scare every single one of the agnostic or the heliocentric believers out there watching this. Is it all just earthbound? Well, I'm afraid so, folks. Sky really is the limit. Now, part 16 of the RFEFP series is going to be on the Kalman line. So to give you a little insight, where exactly is the edge of space? We're repeatedly asked, where is the edge of the flat earth, etc, etc. But let's turn this question around. Where exactly is the edge of space? Well, folks, this will depend on who you actually ask. Because, funny enough, there is no actual law defining the edge of space. And there is certainly no law defining the limits of national airspace. Because historically, it's been difficult and absolutely, frankly, impossible to pin the exact point at a particular altitude. The Kármán line is set as what's known as an imaginary boundary that's 62 miles up, or roughly 100 kilometres above sea level. But it's imaginary. And that distance, my friends, changes depending on who you are asking and what country you are in. International treaties define space as being free for exploration and use by all. But the same is not true for the sovereign airspace above nations, because those laws governing airspace and outer space are different. So flying a drone 55 miles above China is just fine if space begins at 50 miles up. But define the edge of space at 60 miles and you might find your so-called drone being treated as an act of military aggression. But we will go into a little bit more detail in the upcoming part. So please hit the notification or the subscribe if you are new and come back and watch this one. The truth is that stress doesn't really come from your boss, your kids, your spouse, traffic jams, health challenges or other circumstances. It comes from your subconscious thoughts about these circumstances. Because every single one of us has a purpose here and it's up to you to figure it out whether you want to or you don't. But Oakham's Razor, a circle is a simply closed, is a simple closed shape. It is the set of all points in a plane that are at a given distance from a given point, the center. The earth is a plane circle on a mahusive scale. But in celebration of 50 years, Thanks for watching, but please try and open your mind to the possibility of Zetetic Cosmology. May peace and luck and love be with you, and hope in the continuation of pollution of plastic and other materials, earthly materials, man-made materials, does not ruin it for the future inhabitants. But I'll see you in part 16, my friends. Thanks very much for watching.